All right, guys, before we get going, I do need to apologize for the first six minutes of the field footage. There was a little bit of wind noise here and there, but I encourage you guys to stick around because I got a lot to talk about. There'll be an after action report, but the goal of this video is to do targeted comms, at least a dry run that is long range and 100% off grid. I'm preparing for a targeted contact the end of next month. And uh, to do that, I wanna basically do some health and fitness training. I plan to cover eight miles. I'm about two miles into my run. We're gonna go get up on a high point. And uh, the plan for today is to test out some early testing I've done and research to make the targeted contact happen with a gentleman out in Tennessee. I'm in Arizona, so this is very much gonna be a long range contact around 1500 miles. I've got a custom antenna I built this morning in preparation. So I'm gonna talk about the four things that we need to do in order to prepare for a targeted contact like that. Stick around. All right, so I'm about uh, three miles in now and about to do the ascent here. Apologies for wind noise. I'm running ultra light today. Just running 20 pounds on the 11 liter Osprey pack. That includes two liters of water, the 10 essentials, my comms gear, which is the 818, my FZM1, my 17 meter dipole, uh, some guy kits, and uh, the Soda Beams carbon six carbon fiber mast. So we're gonna try to do some digital and also dial in the, um, the antenna today and tune that uh, for the 17 meter band. And uh, yeah, try to stay in zone two cardio and uh, I'm gonna walk the, uh, the incline. All right, guys, like I said, I'm out here for a training exercise and dry run for a long range targeted contact. And there are four things that we need to keep in mind who that person is, where they're located, what their skills are, and what gear they have. In my case, I'm in Arizona. The gentleman is out in Tennessee. So that's a 1500 mile contact. That's gonna restrict the techniques we have at our disposal for long range communication. We're gonna to have to use HF. That leads me into skills. This gentleman is a uh, general class operator here in the US. So he has the ability to work HF. In terms of gear, uh, he only has a Zygu G90, which limits me to 20 watts. We'll get into the propagation analysis tools I used in a future video, but suffice to say, we're really stuck to digital modes, um, and that's why we're gonna get on the air with the laptop and my five or six watt rig. Uh, I would prefer to bring my 100 watt rig and run 20 watts, but uh, with that trail run and having about three and a half miles with elevation, that's not gonna cut it. So. Even 20 pounds, believe it or not, uh, for me was a little bit difficult today. Uh, I just don't train during the winter season. My season is in the summer when it's beautifully hot out here and north of 110 degrees. Guys, I encourage anybody who does not operate in the field to try it more than just during the two field days that occur. Look at this rocky terrain. This is absolutely throwing a wrench in how I deployed my uh, dipole. But look at all these rocks here. Um, so a couple things, I've got kind of the gear laid around everywhere. I typically bring my uh, trekking poles to use as the ends for the guy point, and there's just no way with all of the rocks here. So we improvise, and I'm actually clipping it directly to a Palo Verde using the S-clip carabiners. And guys, if you only want to learn one knot, learn the top line hitch. I can actually adjust the length of pull just by moving this up and down, and it makes guying things out really freaking easy. Now, if we head over here, again, look at all these freaking rocks. I always pick a spot out here in the desert that has a plant so that I can stick my uh, 24 inch tent stake and then run the mast here. And then I had to do the same technique on the other side. Not the best job considering what I had to work with, but uh, I don't think I even need to tune this thing. Um, it was a pain in the ass trying to find two spots. I didn't even use the trekking poles like I normally do. Uh, they wouldn't have been effective in this terrain. So we're gonna take the analyzer here, and this is my number one piece of critical kit if you guys are getting into ham radio, and let's see where we are. So uh, 1.34 uh, is actually acceptable for what we need to do on 17 meters. And then um, if you go to single, I've got that one dialed in. So about 1.4 to one on the frequency we wanna work for JSA call. And we're gonna be running uh, six watts on the Yesu FT81AND in the Slim Boy Man Pack. And uh, I'm already getting a ton of activity on the waterfall here. So this $10 homemade dipole is could probably gonna knock it out of the park. I'll put a link down to the short where I actually showed the build this morning. Like I said, we're gonna get into the analysis in the next video of how to actually write the comps plan. Uh, but I put the cart in front of the horse, 17 meters and 12 meters for the two bands that showed the best likelihood for success. Uh, we are transmitting right now. And I put out a quick heartbeat there to see who could hear me. 
Uh, we'll see what happens when it when uh, people acknowledge or uh, don't acknowledge my station. And I already have at least two stations coming back to me. We've got uh, K2RHL. We'll have to see where he's coming in from. AE4HZ and potentially a third station coming in right there on the uh, the waterfall. Like I said, I'm an off-grid operator and a software developer. I also developed some tools. This is not yet released yet. It is called MCOM Tools. And one of the things that it allows me to do is to actually uh, do a bunch of offline map stuff. So we'll do show JSA call stations here. And uh, we'll really quickly be able to see where we're propagating. And just like I had intended, we're actually making it out into the Tennessee area. Look, that's Kentucky, and that's a distance of 15, uh, 1,570 miles. And let's see who the next station is. We've got KK4CJO. He's in Tennessee. So we've already nailed this exercise, guys. I mean, the rocks here are killer on my bum. But uh, let's see who the third or fourth station is. Oh, that's my station at the house. That one is not fair. But uh, these two stations right here are exactly what I was looking for. So I'm going to make some coffee. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. I'm actually spending a lot less time setting up shots. It's point and shoot. There's going to be some wind noise. I'll try to mitigate that in the future. Uh, I was able to actually successfully send a message to James KK. For CJO, I basically put 818. I'm actually only running 2.5 watts DIY 17 meter dipole, and I got an acknowledgement back from his station. So, pretty sure that uh, this exercise with uh, T Rex arms is going to work out beautifully, assuming we do it within the next month or so. All right, morning guys. Let's go ahead and jump into a little bit of a walkthrough of that exercise and an after action report. Again, apologies about some of that wind noise. I'm going to correct that in the future videos. So the exercise was a success. I had set out to do a targeted contact, or not a targeted contact, but I wanted to test HF propagation from Arizona and into Tennessee because that's where I want to make my target, targeted contact. And we did that, uh, basically covered anywhere from 14 to 1600 miles. And we did it on very low power with some very modest equipment. My entire kit, including my support gear that has my 10 essentials, and the radio equipment came in at 20 pounds, which allowed me to actually double dip and do a little bit of a training exercise and cover just under, I would say, seven-ish miles uh, round trip. So it was actually fun to be able to also get some exercise while carrying a small loadout that had all the gear that I, that I needed for that exercise. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, so like I said, I had a plan to essentially see if I could make a communication happen between myself and Isaac. I typically don't do that long range communication. Uh, most of my communication exercises that I do daily are geared around the Southwest. And for that, we use different antennas, different bands and different gear. So I knew that I was going to have to find a band or set of bands that would allow us to do off grid, no infrastructure uh, communication. And uh, my analysis showed that either the 12 meter amateur radio band or the 17 meter amateur radio band would do the trick. So the first thing I did to set out was to build an antenna and I'll put a link to the short here, actually I have two shorts, and I'll show you how simple it is to build an antenna. Uh, basically I just used a cobra head, a little bit of wire, and uh, that was basically it to uh, be able to make that contact happen on two and a half. Watts. So you don't need a whole lot of gear on the antenna side. You can go pretty modest. Uh, so anyway, so I set out to build that antenna in the morning. I uh, did the math and uh, thought I might have to tune it when I got to the summit. Turns out I was pretty close, so I didn't even bother tuning it. Uh, if I had, it probably could have did a whole lot better, but I really can't complain because I was able to send messages back and forth, text messages over the air, 1,500 miles, and back on two and a half watts uh, in an environment that was really rocky and really terrible. So in general, really happy with that. Uh, but the key takeaway here is that radio is not easy and it requires work and planning. And like I said, the four things that we're gonna explore when we do the um, comms planning is who do we wanna talk to, where are they located, what their skills are, and what gear they have. So let's take a look at all four. So I knew that Isaac was in Tennessee, so that cut out a lot of um, communication options on the table. It really meant we had to go with HF or maybe a satellite device. In terms of his skills, 
It actually worked out pretty well that he is a licensed amateur radio operator and has the same general class license that I do. So we're good there. The limiting factor uh, is really his gear. He's got the Zygu G90, which is a 20 watt HF rig. And that's actually the wattage that the military has standardized on the high end for man portable operations. Uh, so when I did the analysis, uh, voice was gonna be very difficult, voice communication. A single sideband voice so we had to go digital for this planning exercise and we did pretty well based on testing not with him but with people in his his region uh, so the gear uh, can pose a challenge for your comms plan um, and then the skills so this is the part that's unknown for me i don't know what isaac's uh, kind of qualifications outside of having that license are i don't know how much he trains so I'm gonna to try to do a lot of legwork on this future video by writing a field manual. I'm actually gonna take his radio, I'm gonna program it for him. I'm gonna send him all of the antennas. I'm gonna send him three different antennas. I'm gonna do a 12 meter dipole build, um, similar to what you saw today, a 17 meter dipole build that was actually in the video, uh, a linked tri-band, NFED halfway, or NFED halfwave, and maybe even uh, one of my linked dipoles. Uh, and then also I'm going to send him all of the uh, electronics to go with it. So that would be the Panasonic FZM1 with iKey keyboard. And then I'm going to take his G90 and turn it into a man pack. So that might be overwhelming and that might be the piece that doesn't allow for our future video to actually make the contact. But we're going to do a full pace plan, primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency. And this HF radio stuff that we're doing kind of falls under either the contingency or emergency portion of the plan. They're kind of like the last resort when everything is unavailable to you. Uh, I actually think what's gonna probably work the best uh, considering uh, maybe his background will be falling back to a satellite device. So I also did some testing that you did not see in that video where I was experimenting with the Garmin inReach Mini and sending uh, satellite. Again, as an off-grid operator, I really prefer HF. I think that's where uh, the magic happens and that really is the only way to do true off-grid communication. Uh, before closing, a couple other things I noticed on this exercise is that I was training with a different uh, group of individuals. They are part of my broader network, but they're not the core team that I train with in Southwest. In the Southwest, we have a very good communication protocol. Uh, namely, we don't step on each other's toes. And by that I mean with these radios, they're um, half duplex, which means you transmit and you can't hear. They transmit, they can't hear. It's not like a telephone where you both can talk at the same time and hear each other at the same time. So I did notice that a few of the less experienced operators in my group in the East Coast uh, were really anxious. They saw my signal and they're like, oh my God, yeah, I got a signal. And they basically were keying up at the same time I was trying to transmit and we lost some messages. So it was good intel to get. I'm actually going to formalize in our plan that bit of it. Anyways, uh, like I said, highlights were we were successful. The antenna build was great. It was nice having the curveball of all of those rocks on the mountain. Uh, the wind noise sucked, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, I look forward to sharing the journey with you guys. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Um, I've got a goal to hit 100,000 subscribers hopefully by next year and if you want to support what i do buy me a coffee is an excellent place to do that i'll put the support link uh in the uh, video description anyways guys i'm the tech prepper be strong be safe and be prepared